Welcome, travelers, to my realm of nightmares. Allow me to be your personal assistant. Come in, take a seat, get comfortable. For when you step into my realm, there's no stepping out. Hello, travelers. PA Nightmares here. I've noticed that over 30% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. So, if you're a new or returning viewer and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you like what I do, liking the video and commenting as well, as it really helps push this video onto the algorithm and it really does help the channel grow. Well, I've taken enough of your time. On to the main event. Brian spoke, as I caught myself off guard thinking about Liam. He lay on the grass, holding an air rifle I'd gotten a couple months ago for my 19th birthday. Aiming down the sights at two magpies, pecking at the soil for food, he spoke to himself. One for sorrow, two for joy. He said, swaying the rifle between the two birds. One for sorrow, two for... He hesitated for a moment. Joy! He finished as he pulled the trigger. In a second, the magpie was on its side, one wing flapping wildly, while the other never moved at all. The other bird, startled, flew away to safety. The poor thing struggled and tried to run or fly away, but it was too late. The damage was done. Oh, fucking boom, man. Did you see that shot? Brian said as he pumped his fist in the air. He was a bit too excited. I looked on and ever so slightly nodded. I was not anywhere near as excited to see a bird struggle for its life as he was. This wasn't exactly what I had in mind for the air rifle. Brian began running over to the dying animal. Come on, Danny. Let's go see. He barked as he lit up a cigarette. I took my time following over. He picked the bird up and snapped its neck. I recoiled in shock. Brian, for fuck's sake, man. Putting it out of its misery. He snapped back. Still, it's horrible. You're banned from using the gun from now on. I said, picking it up off the ground. Right, okay, whatever. He laughed. What are we going to do today anyway? We should get some cans and go to the pond. We sometimes got some cans of beer and sat by a pond situated within a community park. Not many people went down that way, but there were a few benches and it was a nice spot to get drunk and hang out. Sure, we could go to pubs and drink like normal people do, but we like to calm and we're a little more withdrawn than most people. Whatever, I'm not bothered. Nothing else to do anyway, I replied, looking in the distance. I could see someone walking towards us, but could not quite make them out. It was a large field with any number of directions to walk, but they were coming straight at us. Who's that? I asked Brian, squinting my eyes in the sunlight. Brian turned, with a dead magpie still in hand. No idea. It looks like it could be Sean. He shrugged, sounding like he didn't care. Okay? So why the fuck is he walking all the way over to us? I asked, already suspecting the answer. Because I told him we would be here with the air rifle. Calm down, Danny. Sean's alright. Brian began walking towards him. Seconds later, I heard Sean's annoying as fuck voice. Sean and I never really got along. He owed me 30 euros for about 3 years for a start. He's just annoying, smarmy, always acts like he knows everything, and lies about everything to one-up anything you've done. We used to say, if you've been to Tenerith, he's been to Eleventh. Brian loved him though, probably because they drank a lot together. And while I did drink now and then, it wasn't never as much as those two. They also smoked weed occasionally, whereas I never smoked. Brian, how are you, brother? Sean said, holding his arms out for a hug. I'm brilliant, Sean. 
Brian replied as he reciprocated. I rolled my eyes at the over-exaggerated greeting. Danny? Sean came over to meet me. I'm still a mummy's boy. <laughs> he laughed and acted smug, patting my face with his hand, thinking he was hilarious. <laughs> Good one, I said, looking at the air rifle, imagining myself just firing into his face. In the past five years, Brian had become a bit of a wild card. He started drinking not long after Liam went missing. I mean, I had some rough times too, but I dealt with it in different ways. Brian seemed to go off the rails a bit. He fell in with a crowd of guys we were in school with, but never really knew at the time. Ashwin, an Indian kid whose mum died when he was young, whose dad was extremely strict and also an alcoholic. Dennis, who had been caught dealing drugs at school and spent time in a young offenders institute. Then there was Sean. His dad was abusive to him, his mom, and his brothers before his oldest brother snapped and gave him brain damage by hitting him with a car. The three most fucked up kids in school somehow found each other and became best friends. Make it that what you will, I'm sure there's a psychological experiment in there somewhere. To be fair, Ash and Dennis, they were actually really nice guys once you got to know them, but Sean was always just a total dick. I honestly thought if Liam was here, he would have probably done something about Sean, put him in his place somehow. <sighs> I genuinely miss Liam. He could be an asshole sometimes, but he always kept us grounded and stuck up for us. We'd have probably never have even known these guys if he was here. Sean and Brian were chatting just ahead of me in hushed voices. Brian seemed to get agitated before he stormed away from Sean. He walked right past me. He was clearly pissed off about something. What have you said to Sean? Why is he storming off? I asked, demanding an answer immediately. Sean took a step towards me with a wild expression on his face. On pure instinct, I raised the air rifle and took aim at his face. Stay back, man. I fucking swear I'll shoot you. I said in a commanding tone. Sean laughed. Danny, get a grip. I'm not going to do anything. I come in peace. He said sarcastically as he took another step towards me. And why did Brian storm off? Why are you coming for me like a weirdo? I took a step back, still aiming the rifle. I'm not coming for you. I'm just coming over to you. Put the fucking rifle down. You look stupid. He said. I did feel a bit stupid to be honest. Sean continued. I was just telling Brian that I went down to the old bell tower earlier. A few hairs pricked on my arms. And? I said as I lowered the gun, my voice weak. And, Danny boy? He stated with a smile. I saw someone looking out from the top. And I can say with about 90% certainty, it was that older boy you used to hang around with. The one that went missing, uh, William, or whatever. It's Liam, dickhead. I snapped back, jolting the rifle in his direction. And no, you didn't. People already checked the bell tower when the search parties were out. If you know it's good for you, you'll stay away from there. Images of our time in the tower flashed in my mind. Things I spent years trying to forget. Heh, <laughs> whatever. It's just a shitty old building. He declared as he partially turned around. Anyway, I saw what I saw. He might be hiding out there or something, but if you're all too scared of a stupid ghost story to get your friend back, then eh, that's your problem. He turned back to me and threw his arms up. Ooh, don't shoot the messenger! He said with a high-pitched, unreal sarcasm in his voice and a shit-eating smirk on his face. Sean began walking back the way he came. The urge to shoot him in the back of the head was unbearable. It couldn't be him. It couldn't have been Liam. The whole way home, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I didn't think Sean knew about our night in the bell tower, unless Brian told him, or we agreed to never tell anyone. So him saying that really struck a nerve. It didn't make sense. Brian must have said something. After that night, Liam disappeared from his house not long after we left. The last I seen him was when he left the garage to go to bed. 
His dad seen him acting strange in the garden, walking in circles and mumbling incoherently before he suddenly sprinted away. Liam's dad gave chase, but he couldn't keep up with his younger, fitter son. After that, he was never seen again. He wasn't caught on any CCTV. No other witnesses came forward with sightings. It seemed that he had simply just vanished off the face of the earth. His parents were of course devastated. We searched for months. As a matter of fact, we have never truly stopped searching. After the search parties and police efforts were eventually cancelled, right up till recently. Myself and Brian would often sneak out at night and look for him through the woods, the outskirts of town, or the abandoned houses. Sometimes even going to the bell tower and calling his name from the outside of the fence. But nothing ever came of it. We were too scared to go back inside. Liam's dad and two uncles had already searched the bell tower, top to bottom, one morning not long after he went missing. Not because of anything we had said, just because it was a place near town where somebody could hide. They said there was nothing inside worth mentioning. As the years passed, the world turned, and new things piqued public's interest. Other stories came and went, and Liam's disappearance faded into the background of people's minds. But we never forgot. We never will forget. As long as we live, and we will never stop looking for him. Sean saying that today hit me hard. I couldn't decide if he was just being a prick or if he was sincere. If Brian had told him about the bell tower, then maybe he's just trying and failing miserably to be funny. But on the other hand, if Brian hadn't told him, then what could possibly make him say that? The thought gives me chills. Too many questions in my head. I started feeling sick again, thinking about everything. I just wanted to get home and lay down. When I eventually got home, I went straight to my room. I put on some Pink Floyd and lay on my bed. It was only mid-afternoon, but my brain was tired, playing over everything in my head, sorting my thoughts out. It was mentally draining. It wasn't too long before I drifted off to sleep. I had a dream at the bell tower. That clown thing was dancing in the window, laughing frantically as his arms stretched out to about 40 feet long, grabbed me and Brian and pulled us back inside. Liam was behind it, pulling the strings and dancing too. I woke up sweating and breathing heavy. I wasn't sure if I was definitely awake or not. It was a nightmare. The moonlight shone in through my window and glistened off my damp skin. I didn't even know what time it was. I searched for my mobile phone. It wasn't on my bed. It was it on my floor? It was it on my bedside table? Where the fuck is it? I questioned myself. What time is it? But then I knew. Suddenly I knew the time. In the distance, clear as day, the old bells tolled midnight once again. My phone lit up from the other side of the room. Brian was calling me. Danny, I need to tell you something. Brian sounded panicked, speaking frantically before the phone was at my ear. Do you hear them? He said after a short pause. I listened, but I couldn't bring myself to speak. I was frozen. The bells clanged and chimed their song far away in the distance, but the sound reverberated around my head. It made me feel faint and dizzy. Danny, are you there? It, it's the bells, I said at last finally able to push the words from my mouth. I... I hear them, Brian. I need to tell you something. Something Sean told me. I didn't believe him at first. That's why I stormed off. I thought he was just being a... I know. I interrupted. He told me to. I don't want to believe it either. But that's where we always thought he ended up. You didn't tell Sean about what happened to us in there, did you? I asked. Brian scoffed. Of course I didn't. I haven't told anyone. He sounded annoyed at me for questioning his loyalty. Okay, okay, I didn't think you did. I just wanted to be sure. I dropped the phone silently from my ear. But the bell stopped. What do we do? Do we go back? I mean, if he's in there, then we really should go back and see if we can find him. I can't live with the guilt anymore, Brian. We know he was trapped in there, and we never went back. Brian hit back, sounding pissed off before I could say anything else. People searched the bell tower, Danny. Liam wasn't there. There's nothing for us to feel guilty about. He ran away. I stood at my bedroom window, pondering his words for a minute. I still felt guilty, even if he didn't. Sure, 
We were just kids. And sure, we probably would have been killed if we went back that night. But at the end of the day, Liam was gone. And it really felt like that was our burden to carry. We were all supposed to make it together. And one of us got left behind. Danny. I heard Brian from the other end of the line after a long silence. Brian, look, before you say anything else, I think we need to go back. What if, what if somehow Liam is still in there? What if there is any way possible we can get him back? We're not kids anymore. If there's even the slightest chance we can get our friend back home. I think we should take it. I heard Brian breathing heavily as I spoke. Danny, that place fucked us up. Maybe not you, since you're so desperate to go back. But that night has ruined my fucking life. Brian was sobbing and sniffling as he spoke. We owe it to him, Brian. We always said we would stick together no matter what. We need to get him back. I wasn't taking no for an answer. Fuck's sake. I suppose you're right, Danny. I just... I don't know. He paused for a few moments and then continued. Meet us tomorrow at 12. If we're going, we're taking the guys with us. And we're going during the day. Meet us at the park near the abandoned houses. No problem. I'll be there, I replied. Brian hung up. I lay back down in bed. Images of that night littered my thoughts. I struggled to get back to sleep. I felt dazed and horrible the next morning, like I was hungover somehow. I got myself ready and sat thinking of what I should bring with me. I took a rucksack and put some things in it. A few large kitchen knives, a hammer, a big torch with extra batteries, and I took a lighter with a can of hairspray. I remember the paper on fire being a relatively effective tool. I felt like a makeshift flamethrower was somewhat up in her game. I met Brian, who was already with Sean and Ash. They were sitting on a small grassy patch next to the road. We were just waiting on Danny with the car. With all the pleasantries out of the way, we had to get down to it and tell everyone about the bell tower. Dennis arrived shortly after I did, and I let Brian take the lead on the story. I could see in everyone's faces that they thought we were full of shit. I sat thinking to myself, <laughs> just wait until you're inside. Sean laughed, therefore Ash and Dennis copied him, but I really felt like they had to force their laughter. I think there was at least some doubt woven into their minds, which was a good thing. We were all going in, and we all had to be prepared to expect the worst. We got to the car and made a short trek through the woods. I saw the looming bell tower come into view through the trees. I shuddered. Sean and Ash were messing around and laughing at something, but I couldn't focus. I was already on edge. My mind was already in that tower. As we approached the fence, Brian pulled out a pair of bolt cutters. Hey, good thinking, I said, patting him on the back. Within a minute or so, he had cut a long slit in the fence, more than enough to part the fence and easily climb through. And just like that, we were back. Looking up at the arches like we did when we were kids and had no idea what we were getting into. I felt like I was 13 again. I felt scared, but I also felt determined. Determined to prove myself. Determined to get my friend back and not let this place haunt my dreams anymore. Before I could say anything, Sean was putting his boot into the wooden door. It began to splinter and crack and eventually burst open. <laughs> Simple as that. He chuckled and walked inside without hesitation. I felt like I could actually see the stale air rushing out from the tower. As the sulfuric smell that was all too familiar met my nose and took me right back to five years ago. I looked at Brian. He didn't seem too sure about going in. We let Dennis and Ash head in first. Not wanting to let anyone out of my sight, I quickly hurried in behind them, and Brian followed suit. Dennis cautiously shuffled along the floor that was strewn with rubble and wood, dead birds, and a mutilated fox heaped in the corner, attracting hundreds of flies. He smells that fucking asshole in here, Ash piped up. If that smell comes from your asshole, man, I would go see a doctor ASAP. Sean fired back. They all laughed all but myself and Brian, who just stood looking up the center at the stairs and landing that had snaked all the way up. Dennis was already climbing the first set of stairs. Wait, Brian called to him. We all go together. Nobody splits up. Dennis rolled his eyes. Right. Well, hurry up then. I want to get home for dinner. 
I shook my head. These guys have no clue what could be waiting up those stairs. We all milled around before heading in a single file line to the stairs. As it was already midday, it wasn't too dark. Light spilled in through the doorway, the few windows that weren't boarded up, and through the cracks in the wood of those that were boarded up. Dennis was already halfway up waiting, so we began walking up as we caught up to him. One thing I didn't even think about was bringing a ladder to reach the second floor. I would have kicked myself for being such an idiot. I would have, if Liam's ladder wasn't already set up perfectly right at the stairs. Brian and I looked at each other. Then he stepped to go forward. I put my hand on his chest. Wait, I said. The ladder being there made me feel uneasy. Why? Why is it even here? I asked. Maybe Liam's dad set it up when they were looking for him. Brian suggested. And his dad, or better yet, his uncle never thought to question why his ladder was here? I looked up and down. What's the hold up? Why are you two freaking out about a fucking ladder? Sean spoke loudly, shaking his head. We're just wondering why it's there, or how it got there. Brian sounded annoyed. I was annoyed too. Who cares why it's there? He turned and gestured to the ladder. It's there, so we should use it. Sean then turned back to us. No, oh, or maybe it's there because William has been using it to get up and down the stairs. You ever think of that? It's Liam, you fuck. I attempted to chastise Sean, but he had already turned around and started climbing the ladder. I looked at Brian and shook my head. We never should have brought him, I said as I walked away. Sean had reached the top of the ladder and started climbing onto the remaining portion of the stairs. Before he was even off the ladder, Dennis had begun climbing. I stood next to Ash. What's the deal with the ladder then? I'm confused, he asked in a soft voice. It's just another part of the story, I told him. It's Liam's uncle's ladder, but when they searched, they said they found nothing noteworthy. Then we get here and it's set up nicely at the stairs waiting for us, it just gives me a bad feeling. I can see why, he said. He patted me on the back and nodded his head towards the ladder. You go on, Danny. I'll get Brian. Ash turned and went to fetch Brian, who looked upset and was standing stationary a few feet away. I stood at the bottom of the ladder, waiting for them to come over. Then, one by one, we climbed up and onto the crumbling stairs. As we ascended the old stones, I could literally feel the air getting thicker. The smell of rot and damp fouled my nose. Sean and Dennis led the way. They were up front joking about stuff and laughing like little girls. I couldn't really hear what they were saying. Suddenly, Sean blurted out, William, are you up here? Come out, come out wherever you are. How difficult it is to remember one simple name. I was beginning to think he was calling Liam by William deliberately out of pure disrespect. It's Liam, Brian corrected him. Oh, sorry. Sean jested. Dennis snickered at his sarcasm. Liam! Sean called out again. Where are you, Liam? He was elongating his name, acting stupid like it was funny. As we approached the second floor landing, I could hear something. It sounded faint, as if it were in the distance. It was humming, like someone was humming a tune. The tune was vaguely familiar. Nobody seemed to notice. Everybody continued as if nothing was out of the ordinary. We made our way into the middle of the landing. I spent a few minutes looking at the door where I first heard the whisper that five years ago, it was still shut. Dennis kicked the door opposite and it swung open. The smell of death rushed out to greet us and we slowly entered. I remembered this room. The same pile of dead birds lay in the corner now nothing more than a pile of bones and molted black feathers. A creaking sound from outside grabbed my attention. I turned, but again, nobody seemed phased. The humming started again. What was that tune? I thought as I racked my brain. Everyone was talking over each other, and I struggled to get a word in. All the while, the humming was getting noticeably louder. Uh, does nobody else hear that? Can everybody shut up for a second and listen? They all stopped. The humming continued. I could see eyes widening. 
As we all quietly counted in our heads and confirmed to ourselves that all five of us were in the room, and there was music coming from somewhere else. What is it? I've heard that before, somewhere. Brian said, keeping his voice low. The humming grew a little louder once more. We stood absolutely frozen still, and we listened. The humming appeared to sound like it was echoing down a long corridor from another room, growing very gradually louder. Every one of us were dead silent, too frightened to move, the humming continued. After about 10 or 20 seconds, it broke into a soft singing voice. What do you see when you turn out the lights? I can't tell you, but I know it's mine, the voice sang. My jaw dropped almost to the floor as it turned to Brian. He was the same, his mouth hung open, and his white eyes began to well up. It's not. I began and shook my head. Brian nodded. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. Mm, get high with a little help from my friends. Oh, I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends. The voice, it felt almost forgotten, yet so familiar. It made my hair stand up and my gut wrench. It's Liam. Brian whispered. That's the song. Hey. Brian never got to finish his sentence. The door slammed shut with such force we all jumped back. Sean laughed nervously. <laughs> right. Uh, enough's enough. I'm getting out of here. He stormed over to the door and pulled it open. Ash and Dennis were right behind him. I could already see the darkness for myself. The tide had turned. The air had changed. And we weren't alone anymore. Oh, God, Ash exclaimed, as Sean stood trembling, still holding the door handle. I ran over. Brian never moved. Directly across the landing, the door was wide open now. I could see into that room for the first time. Liam, Liam sat on the floor. A, a dim candle sat flickering in front of him, casting dancing shadows, distorting his face. Hey, Danny, he whispered. I looked into his glowing, yellow, serpentine eyes and shivered. He slowly lifted his finger to his mouth. We were frozen in our place for a long time while Liam just, just stared at us. He seemed hazy. He didn't look solid, more like some kind of shimmering apparition. We were too scared to move a muscle. The candlelight danced and flickered, illuminating the thing, using Liam's face to mock us. He hunched over and blew the candle out. When the flame died, he was completely swallowed by darkness, like he just vanished. The door slowly closed as we watched in complete awe. There was a thick atmosphere of terror and confusion amongst the group. After the door closed, we stood exactly as we were. It was another long time before anyone felt brave enough even to breathe, let alone move. Still think we're lying? I said, shaking my head, almost directly at Sean. So what? Your friend Liam's in there? Why don't you go and get him then? Sean snapped back. You guys obviously had this all planned or something sean trust me that's not liam this is how it all started before brian said moving towards the door we should just leave i think ash suggested no fuck that this is all bullshit it's all just stupid stories they have told him to sit there to try and scare us sean blurted out seemingly in some sort of rage Sean, listen to yourself. You're seeing our friend, who has been missing for five years, just popped up so we could play a prank on you. Are you out of your bloody mind? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Whatever. I'm not leaving. You're all full of shit. He exclaimed before heading back to the door. I'll go into that room and prove that it's him, and that he's been hiding there. You're insane, man. You're literally insane. Brian said. Come on, whoever's leaving with me, let's go. 
Myself, Brian, and Ash began walking to the stairs. Dennis hung around, looking at Sean. Come on, Sean. Let's go, man. Dennis said with his hand on Sean's back. You can go if you want, mate. I'm going to look around a bit more. Sean began walking over to the room where we saw Liam. Dennis shook his head and turned to us as we waited. I, I can't leave him here by himself. He looked genuinely worried. We turned and continued down the stairs. I could see Sean trying to barge the door open before he was eventually out of sight. Ash and Brian were muttering to each other. I couldn't hear what they were saying as I was listening for anything unusual coming up the stairs. As we got to the ladder, Ash was having second thoughts about leaving anyone behind. Whatever Brian had been telling him had obviously shaken him up. We should probably get them, he said. Brian looked at me, and then Ash. Look, man, me and Danny have been through a lot here. We came to see if we can get Liam back, and I feel like it's pretty obvious that isn't happening. I'm not going back. If you want to go, then go. I'm going home. I'm sorry, man. I looked at Brian. I was honestly torn. We had already left someone behind, and I wasn't sure I was ready to carry that guilt for anyone else. Danny. Ash looked to me for someone to go with him. I... I don't know, Ash. There's two of them there. He isn't alone, but... I really think if we're going back, we should all stick together. I shrugged. I was struggling to make any kind of decision. It was already a bad thing that we had left someone out of our sight. I already felt like if we did go back, I wouldn't be able to trust either of them. We were startled by a crashing sound from above. A horrible hissing and intermittent screams for help. We could hear a scuffle and things being thrown around. We all looked at each other, terrified. We need to just get out of here. There's nothing we can do. Brian said, ready to get down onto the ladder. Ash began running up the stairs. Ash, wait! I called to him. Brian, we can't let him go up alone. Brian looked down to potential safety, then back up to Ash, who was mindlessly running into potential danger. Fuck's sake, Danny. He said as he climbed back to his feet. We ran to meet Ash at the top of the stairway. He had stopped dead in his tracks. Dennis was on the landing, stumbling towards us, muttering to himself. He was covered in dirt and didn't even seem to notice we were there. Dennis, Ash said. He looked up and saw Ash right in front of him. Don't, Dennis mumbled as he continued staggering towards the stairs. Dennis, wait there. Ash called to him again. He was approaching me and Brian. I looked into his eyes. His face was bruised and beaten. His eyes seemed normal. Not that it convinced me this was really Dennis. I cautiously put my hand out and steadied him. Dennis, it's us, I said to him reassuringly. He started crying like a five-year-old who just fell off his bike. Dennis, what happened? Where's Sean? Dennis sobbed and fell to the floor. He got him. He got him. He fell inside the doorway and it closed. All I could hear was him screaming. Then something grabbed me and started smashing into the wall. The next thing I remember was Ash saying my name. I don't, I don't even know how I got down here. I was dubious about the whole situation. I looked at Dennis with skepticism. Ash was already ever picking him up, but I wasn't ready to believe anything he said right away. I could tell Brian was the same. Screaming and shouting from above filled the entire area. We heard banging and Sean shouting for Dennis to come back. Ash looked at me, horrified. We need to go. No fucking around. We need to go and just try and get him. I pulled a knife out of the bag and gave the other one to Brian. Ash, just help Dennis to walk if he needs. Me and Brian will go first. I'll, I'll be okay. Let's just go and get him, Dennis said. I narrowed my eyes at Dennis. His eagerness to go back upstairs did not set well with me. Brian and I turned to head for the stairs. I whispered to Brian, If he makes any strange moves, I'm stabbing him in the neck and running for my life. I'm not joking, man. I don't trust this. Brian just nodded in agreement as we began to ascend. When we reached the landing, the screaming stopped, but the door to the room Sean was in was opening and slamming shut constantly. 
Dennis and Ash were only a few steps behind. I pulled out the torch and switched it on. It shone over to the rapidly slamming door. Every time it opened, I could see a crooked, opaque face low down, staring back at us, gaunt with deep black eyes. After a few seconds of the torchlight on the door, it shut and stayed shut. Well, what do we do? Ash asked. I don't know, Ash. I don't necessarily want to go over there, but that's where Dennis said Sean is, so I'm assuming that's where we need to go. I snapped back, feeling pretty pissed off that we had come back because Sean wanted to act like a big, hard man. The four of us crept onto the landing. I had the bigger of the two knives held out in one hand in front of me and my torch in the other. I went first. The others quietly kept close. The door opened a crack when I got within two feet of it. They're coming. I heard a whisper say in a crackled voice. Who they were wasn't abundantly clear. Did it mean us? As in we're coming to the room? Or was it a warning that something else would be coming for us? I directed my torch into the small opening. Black polished fingers slid back inside the darkness. I closed my eyes. I raised my boot and kicked the door open with such force anything behind it was getting a large dose of wood to the face. The door swung open with such ease in contrast to how impossible it seemed to open earlier or even the last time we were here. I swung and stabbed the knife indiscriminately in and around the opening. Nobody else made a sound. When I opened my eyes, my torch lit the room and we found nobody inside. Brian gave a light shove to my shoulder, urging me to keep going. We carefully entered the room. I had never seen behind this door, so everything was as new to me as it was to Ash and Dennis. There are barred windows and broken wooden beds with shackles cemented into the walls and floor near each one. The floor filled in with sticky. Some kind of tar-like substance had been intentionally spilled all around, making weird shapes on the ground. A stone circle fire pit sat in the center, and there were crude drawings and symbols lining the walls. The smell was unbearable. I choked. I had to leave. The others were not far behind. <coughs> what was that smell? Ash asked, coughing as he spoke. No idea, man. Let's just not go in there again. I said, catching my breath. Dennis seemed okay, which drew a little more suspicion on him, for me and Brian at least. I could see Brian glancing at him every now and then. I was reluctant to take my eyes off him myself. We looked up the stairs. It led to the fourth floor. I didn't want to go any higher, but it looked like we had to. If anything, I didn't want to reach your spells again. Dennis and Ash had already started climbing the stairs. I looked at my knife. I looked at Brian. We both followed, keeping a few steps behind. I almost fell down the stairs when the door to the room we were just in slammed shut. Ash whimpered. I, I don't like this. I want to get out of here. We all do, Ash. Just make sure we stick together and we'll make it. I said to him, trying to calm him down. We approached the fourth floor landing. To the right, I saw the door to our base room. It was slightly ajar. Brian, that's the safe room we were in last time. We should go in there. I flashed a torch over to the door. I forgot about that, he said. Everybody, head in there. Brian commanded, pushing past Ash and Dennis. Entering the room again, it felt exactly as it did before. Safe, comforting. I don't know why, but this room seemed completely detached from the rest of the building. The old cabinets and broken ancient furniture still sat where we left them. I made my way to the window and looked out. This time, it wasn't sadness I felt looking outside. It was determination. I was determined to get us all out of here alive. As I looked out, the wind was brushing the trees. I could almost smell the fresh air. As I gazed up to the moon and to the stars above, I began to wonder. Why the fuck were the moon and stars out? It couldn't have been later than 2 or 3 p.m. Um, guys? I started, glaring with confusion at the darkened forest surrounding us. Nobody noticed. They were all looking around and chatting amongst themselves. Guys! I called again. I turned to see everyone stop what they were doing and look over to me. 
Not one of them seemed shocked. Doesn't anyone see anything wrong here? I asked, bewildered by the fact that still, none of them had any idea what I was talking about. Look, I pointed to the window. They all looked at me like I was insane. Oh God, I put my hand on my face. Brian, what time is it? He twigged straight away. I saw the second his mind put it together. His jaw dropped. What the fuck? How long have we been in here for? Ash and Dennis looked equally shocked as they realized. I don't know, two hours max, I'd say, Ash said. The wind outside began to howl. I looked out again, absolutely dumbfounded at what I was looking at. Bumps and scraping noises accompanied the howling wind. The window seemed to rattle in its frame. Something stirred inside the room. One of the smaller cabinets started to shake, getting progressively more violent. We all took a few steps back and huddled together. Then it stopped. The soft click of a latch broke the silence, and the cabinet door creaked open. Liam's head poked out of the partially open door. Come and look at this, he said as his face disappeared back inside. We stood silent. J just head to the door, I said to everyone. We inched to the side, never taking our eyes off the cabinet in front of us. Another click of a door opening behind us. We all turned in unison. A cupboard door had opened only about an inch. A hand began to emerge, sliding along the other door that was still closed. Long, pointed fingers tapped and scraped the old wood as they danced along the cabinet. The arm began to stretch out, quickly getting longer and longer as it made its way to the door to the landing. We kept moving, taking small but quick steps. We made it to the door first. The cupboard door burst open as we began to exit the room. The tall black figure was crouching inside. It looked right up at us, directly into my eyes. Its gaze burned. The creature let out a scream and in an instant darted towards us. We all hurried out and pulled the door shut. A loud banging came from the other side as the door rattled and cracked. We held it shut with everything we had. We need to go somewhere. We need to run. Just run down the stairs. I cried out. On the count of three, we let go and run for the stairs to head down. As we got to the stairway, we could see at the bottom, slowly crawling up each step, was the same contorted, jagged black figure smiling and laughing at us as its hands and feet appeared to scorch and crumble the stone beneath it. We were once again frozen in fear as the beast slowly got closer. We only had one other way to run up. Fuck! I screeched. Okay, everyone, up the stairs. We all turned, stumbling over each other as we clambered for the stairs leading up. It was clear. We sprinted up as fast as we could. I could see the stairway to the bells come into view as we approached the fifth floor landing. The two rooms on the other side of the stairs had closed doors. We could hear faint whimpering coming from one of the rooms. We couldn't tell which one. Maybe it was both. I couldn't think straight. The left door was where we found Liam laying in some sort of ritualistic manner. The right door? Well, we had never seen what lay beyond the right door. We took a minute to catch our breath. Ash and Danny seemed to recognize the whimpering as coming from Sean, but like me, could not tell where it was coming from. We need to pick a room to try first, Brian said. We found Liam in that room before. He continued gesturing to the left door. There was something in that other one. We didn't go in there, I added. Dennis looked at both doors. Why don't we just do two of us in each? He asked, Ash glancing at us for approval. No, we stay together. No splitting up, Dennis. Brian cut in, using air quotes when he said the name Dennis. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Dennis snapped back sharply. You tell me. You're constantly trying to split us up. Are you even who you say you are? Brian stepped forward, waving his knife. You're fucking paranoid, Brian. Put the knife away. You look like... Everyone, shut up! I interrupted. 
We need to stick together. Stop fighting. Let's just try the left one first. And we all go. I said as they ushered Dennis and Ash in front of us. I gave Brian a stern look. He wasn't too pleased. Come on, Brian. We can do this, man. Just keep it together. I patted his back and we followed the others. We walked slowly to the door, listening intently for any noises, either from inside or anywhere, really. Ash pushed the door open. Just like before, Sean lay in almost the exact same way Liam did five years ago, although he was awake and he was weeping to himself. Laying in the matted tarlock mud, surrounded by crystals and symbols, clothes torn and ragged with cuts and burns all over his body. He never saw us come in. Ash strode over to Sean. Sean, it's us, man. You need to get up. We need to get out of here, Ash said, patting his face. He's absolutely freezing, Ash exclaimed. Come on, mate. Time to get up. Sean still failed to recognize Ash's presence or any of us for that matter. He just weeped and mumbled to himself. We staggered out to the landing with Sean. The weeping from the other room was still audible. Should, should we check? I asked reluctantly. I don't know, man. We got Sean. We should just go. Brian replied. Yeah. What do we do about Liam? You never know. What if he could be in there? Danny. Brian started with a look of disapproval. Okay. Shout at him then. Just don't go in. Just shout his name. I put my ear to the door and could hear the whimpering of someone on the other side. I hesitated. Is it Liam? I called out. Silence. Liam! I called again, putting my ear to the door. Who, who's there? Who's there? P please, help me. I took a step back in shock. It was Liam's voice, but was this another trick? I looked at Brian. He was not happy to see me contemplating knocking this door in. I need you, Brian, I said as I passed him the bag. We have to take any chance we get. Brian shook his head. I turned and kicked the door. The latch broke pretty easily. A thick wave of dust rushed from the dark room. The smell was putrid. I saw a figure a few feet away. Danny, he said. He fell to his knees and began to cry. Danny, he sobbed. He came closer to me. I was absolutely shocked at the sight of his emaciated face. His drawn in cheeks, eyes sunken into the sockets, his head little more than that of a skull, his dark cavernous mouth bore little to no teeth and was rounded by cracked lips, blackened by old dried blood. His body looked frail and skeletal, covered in cuts and bruises. His clothing was almost non-existent. He crawled over to me. I sat on the ground before him. Liam, I'm so sorry, man. We can get you out of here now. We can get you home, I told him, hoping I could lift any part of his spirits. You left me here, he said, struggling to get a breath. You and Brian left me here. Why did you leave me here? His eyes welled. I hated myself. Looking at him like this made me feel a hundred times worse. Danny. I heard Brian call to me. Leave him. We need to go. His voice was straight to the point and serious. I couldn't see what Brian was seeing, but I didn't have to. I already knew. I already knew it wasn't Liam. But seeing him in this state made me think about what really happened to him. Was this how he ended up? I truly think we were being shown what became of Liam. I cried as his limp body lay across my lap, struggling to breathe, struggling to stay alive. Is this what his last moments were like? I thought about his family. How hard it had been for them losing their son. Suspicion constantly drawn on them. Dealing with the daily accusations about his disappearance when we knew they had nothing to do with it. Liam coughed and sputtered. Some horrible black saliva landed on my arm. I looked into his yellow eyes. I knew it wasn't him. Danny, we need to go. Like, now. Brian called again, more urgency in his tone. I put my knife to Liam's throat. I'm sorry, I sobbed. He looked shocked and scared, but I wasn't being fooled this time. I slid the knife with ease into his throat. 
all the way until it came up the back. No blood spilled. I threw his body off me, but the knife was stuck. My, my hand was stuck. I tried to pull it, but it wouldn't budge. Purple and black veins twisted out from the wound, snaked up the blade and onto the handle around my hand and twisted all the way up to my shoulder. Binding me with so much strength, I lost the feeling in my arm. Liam's body went into convulsions. His bones snapped and the limbs contorted. His head fell further back as his neck elongated, pulling the knife and my arm with it. Two burning hands on the end of impossibly long arms grabbed my face. I had let myself get caught. If I wasn't so terrified, I'd have been asking myself how I could have been so stupid. There was no chance. I wasn't getting away this time. Danny! I heard Brian scream. Just run! I told him. Just, just run! I feel like I'd given up any hope. I felt the energy completely drain from my body. My eyes began rolling back. All I could see in a haze of gray mist was a grinning face with chiseled shaped features and glowing yellow eyes, a face of coal, of smoldering ash. I couldn't help but think, this, this is probably the end for me. I could hear the bells, I could feel the wind on my face, there was nothing I could do. My body was paralyzed. The face got closer to me, the bells rang louder, the hot, arid, sulfuric stench of the beast's breath filled my lungs. I choked. I couldn't breathe. This was it. I had let myself linger too long, and I was caught. The creature jolted. A terribly painful shock ran through my body, like a bolt of lightning. The startled face twisted in ways I couldn't even imagine being possible. I was mesmerized by the control this thing had over every part of itself. I could see the yellow eyes glow brighter. The beast looked into the distance. A bright orange glow came from above me, getting progressively bigger and brighter, like a sunrise over a clear sky, gradually coming more into view. A huge chaotic ball of fire seemed to burn right before me, continuously never faltering. Was this some kind of message from beyond? What was this? The beast recoiled in fear, and what seemed like pain. I could feel my life draining from me as it latched onto my body with everything it had. Slowly the burning on my arms and legs began to ease. My body regained mobility. I could feel again. My senses had started to process my surroundings more effectively, and I was able to understand what was happening. The bells had stopped. The wind had stopped. The pain from the confusion. The feeling of being drained on my very soul. It had all stopped in an instant. As I was able to set up and see Brian standing in front of me with a can of hairspray and a lighter in his hands. He looked at me. By the expression on his face, I could tell I must have been in a bit of a bad state. Brian offered his hand. I lifted my arm to take it. Pain shot through my whole body. Brian helped me to my feet, and I noticed that we were at the bells. How did I get up here? I asked. I had no idea how long ago I had blacked out, or how I had ended up at the bells. I don't know. We got thrown from the room, and the door slammed shut. All we could hear was you screaming. Then everything went quiet, Brian explained. A few minutes later, the bells were chiming, and I thought we should at least look. When I got up the stairs, you looked like you were having a seizure, and that thing was right in your face. Thanks. Thanks for not giving up on me, I said. Even talking was accompanied by great pain. I looked around. Where's everyone else? They're downstairs. They didn't want to go any higher. Brian replied, sounding disappointed. Liam's not coming back, is he? My head hung in shame as I spoke. I don't think so, Danny. We just need to make sure we all get out of here now. We tried our best. Now we need to stay alive. Brian put his arm around me to help me walk. Although I felt okay to walk myself, I was grateful for the hand. I could see Dennis, Ash, and Sean at the bottom of the stairs, staring up with horrified looks on their faces. You okay? Ash called up. I'll be fine, I answered taking my time on the steps. We got to the fifth floor landing and we were all reunited. Let's get out of here before any other shit happens. Sean exclaimed. If only that was his thinking earlier. We began our descent. The fourth floor, third floor, second floor. We started on the steps, 
to take the ladder to the first floor. Psst. My ears prickled up. I looked around. Psst. I looked up. Something was falling slowly, dancing and swooshing in the air as it fell. It looked like a small square piece of paper. It landed right at my feet. It was... It was a Polaroid. With trembling hands, I picked it up and flipped it around. The look of fear was clearly evident on my face, as everybody looked worried. What is it, Danny? Dennis asked. I narrowed my eyes and looked at him with suspicion. I turned the photo to show the others. It was a Polaroid of Dennis, like he had taken a selfie. His black, toothy grin and yellow, serpentine eyes sent a shiver down my spine, as in the background, I could see Sean, Ash, and Brian watching me kick a door. The door on the fifth floor, where Liam was, Brian immediately held a knife to Danny's neck. Brian pressed the blade into Dennis' neck, almost to the point of breaking the skin. What? What the fuck are you doing? That's not the real me. Dennis stammered as he panicked. I could see him visibly shaking. Ash and Sean took a few steps back up the stairs towards me. Brian grabbed Dennis by the collar and threw him to the ground, knife still pressed to his neck. I knew it, he said. I knew there was something weird about the way you were acting. Brian, I swear, I never took that picture, I swear. Shut up, where's Dennis? What happened to him? There's pure aggression in Brian's voice. I am Dennis. I never took the photo. You have to believe me, man. That wasn't me. Dennis did sound like he was genuinely panicking, but we had all heard it before. What do they mean? Ash asked sheepishly, looking terrified. It means that Dennis has been taken. Whatever that thing is that had me upstairs, it has Dennis too. This isn't the real Dennis, and we need to get as far away from it as quickly as possible. I took another step back. I was now back on the second floor, looking down. Brian was stolen the last couple of steps, holding Dennis with a knife to his throat. He was in a fit of rage I'd never seen him in before as he screamed in Dennis's face. Fucking leave us alone. Let us leave. Just let us leave and we'll never come back. Dennis played with him. Please, Brian. You need to listen to me, man. I'm... I'm me. I never took any photo. What the fuck would I even use to take a photo? He has a point to be fair, Ash piped up. Where would he have gotten a Polaroid camera from? What he used to take the photo is irrelevant. The Polaroid itself is significant, not how it came to be. I informed him. Ash looked at me confused. As we watched the struggle between Brian and Dennis, I could see a dark silhouette climbing the ladder. My heart stopped. Messy, wild, colorful hair on a pure chocolate face. Two tiny glowing red eyes like lasers trained on us. The dripping red paint around the mouth, jagged stained teeth formed a menacing grin. I could see the familiar baggy, black and white checkered suit stained red with blood. Welcome to hell, children. <laughs> that shrill voice made my bones itch. I could see Brian partially release Dennis as he watched the clown still climbing the ladder, making its way up. Dennis slipped from under Brian's grasp and backed away. Ash and Sean stepped back some more. Sean tripped and fell, but never took his eyes off the advancing clown. W w what is that? Sean stammered, sliding back, kicking rubble as his feet slid on the ground. The clown moved in a jerking fashion. Its gaze alternated between all of us, then met my eyes. I looked away. I was speechless. One hand on the crumbling first stair. Brian was still frozen. The clown grabbed his leg and began to pull Brian over. Brian tried to pull himself back up, but couldn't get a grip onto anything. The clown laughed and tugged at his leg. I snapped into action. I carefully ran down the remaining stairs and grabbed Brian's hand. Someone, grab a knife or something. I screamed to the top of the stairs. The clown Welcome repeated its phrase over children. and over again Welcome as its head hell, shook and its hand children. pulled. They were still just standing at the top watching. Did anyone hear me? Fucking help! I screamed again. I saw Dennis coming down with a knife in his hand. My heart sank a little. I wasn't too sure how this would play out. He reached to me and took another two steps down until he was level with Brian's head. 
I closed my eyes as Dennis raised a knife. I heard frantic hacking sounds and ear piercing screams. I opened my eyes. Dennis had almost chopped the clown's arm off. He brought the large blade down two or three more times and the clown almost fell backwards as Brian was quickly released. Brian made a swift move forward and booted the clown in the face. Fucking, fucking clown. He cried, his voice shaking with fear and anger. I peered over the edge. The clown was gone. Its arm remained with a tight grip on Brian's leg, but the clown was completely gone. Get this thing off me. Brian said as he desperately pulled at the severed arm. Everyone, just get down, now. Get down and get out of here, now. Brian commanded, we all obeyed. We climbed down the ladder. Brian went first, then I went. Happy to not fall off this time. Dennis next, and as I bolted to the door, Dennis held the ladder steady for Ash and Sean. The front door was closed, but I could see cracks of light through the splintered wood. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. We almost fell in a heap as we scrambled through the door. Ash emerged and fell immediately to the grass. Then Sean, who stopped at the threshold and looked back to Dennis. There was an almighty clatter of metal from inside. It sounded like the ladder. Dennis? Sean replied as he darted back inside. Ash looked shocked. He got up and looked inside to see what was going on. Oh my god, Dennis, he said as he disappeared back into the building. Brian and I approached the doorway cautiously. We could see them moving around, picking Dennis up off the ground. 10 or 15 seconds later, Ash and Sean came walking out with Dennis hanging over their shoulder. The ladder fell and smacked his head, Sean said. Dennis had blood-soaked hair with some dribbling down his face. He can't drive then. Someone grab his keys, Brian said, holding on his hand. Ash fumbled around in one of Dennis's pockets and produced a car key. We found a slit in the fence and let Ash and Sean maneuver Dennis through. I could feel eyes on me from somewhere. I didn't feel threatened, I just felt like I was being watched. I turned and looked the old bell tower up and down. I vowed to myself I would never return to this place. As my gaze reached the top and one of the arches, Liam sat on the stone ledge watching us. He looked exactly like I remembered him from five years ago. I waved at him. He didn't respond. He looked sad. My gut wrenched seeing him look normal again. I felt crippling guilt. Brian looked at me as I was holding my hand up. What are you doing? He said as he turned and looked up. It's Liam, I replied, looking to see his reaction. Brian looked and I looked back. He was gone. Barely a word was spoken in the car. Ash, Sean, and Dennis sat in the back. I sat in the front and Brian drove. He dropped the guys at Sean's house and assured Dennis he would drop me off and return the car before walking home. Dennis didn't seem to care. They were all too quick to get out of the car and rush into Sean's house. The sun was low in the sky. The light burned my eyes. It felt nice driving with the windows down. The air cooled my face and made me feel better. My body and my mind felt exhausted. Never again, Brian said. It was the first thing he had said the whole journey. Definitely never again. I replied, I really meant it. I would never, ever set foot within the perimeter of that fence. Brian pulled up to my house and parked. He looked at me. He wanted to say something, but couldn't. I could see sadness in his eyes. Liam's never coming back. We just need to accept that and move on. He said eventually. I know. I hate carrying that guilt with me everywhere, every day. Brian put his hand on my shoulder. I know, Danny. I do too. But we'll get through it, man. Always stick together, no matter what. I nodded. I got out of the car and Brian drove away. Nobody seemed to be home, so I went in, got some water, and went to my room to lie down. I needed to have a bath or something help with the pains all over my body, but I was just too tired. I was watching a TV program called Still Game. I wanted something funny to try and take my mind off everything. Before I knew it, I must have blacked out at some point. It was nighttime. The TV was about 12 episodes ahead of where I last remember. I had a couple of text messages and a few missed calls from Brian. 
The first one was from four hours ago. It read, Just dropped the car off at Sean's. Tried to see how Dennis was doing, but they wouldn't answer the door. On my way home now. Hope you're alright, mate. The next message from only 30 minutes ago said, I tried phoning a few times. You okay, Denny? I should probably phone him. Something tapped my window. Tap. I froze. Tap. It happened again. Tap, tap. I was scared stiff. My phone buzzed. Another text from Brian. It was probably him trying to get my attention at the window. I picked my phone up and walked over, feeling a little more relaxed. Brian wasn't there. Illuminated by the dim street light, three figures stood in the road, staring up at my window. I could just make out who it was. Ash, Dennis, and Sean. Their slightly distorted faces all stared right at me, beckoning me down. Their glowing yellow eyes held my gaze and shuddered. I was startled when my phone started ringing. Brian was phoning me. I put the phone to my ear without saying anything. I couldn't think of any words. Danny, something weird as fuck just happened. I'm going to try and come around to yours, man. I don't want to be by myself. Brian sounded frantic. Don't, I said. What? Don't, Brian, I replied. He was silent for a while. Uh, are, are they there, too? He asked quietly, stuttering. But they're here. Shit, how is that possible? I'm looking at him right now, out my window. Brian said, sounding absolutely bewildered. I couldn't understand it myself. They were at his house too? My train of thought was interrupted by Brian talking. What's going on, man? How'd this happen? He continued. I couldn't tell if he was asking me directly or asking himself rhetorically. I, I don't know, I said. But we shouldn't go anywhere near them. Just stay inside. I heard the bells coming from Brian's in through the phone speaker. Brian sighed. Do you hear that? I heard it, but only through the phone. I need to go, man. I'm putting my headphones in. Sick of hearing the fucking bells. Brian sounded almost hysterical and quickly hung up before I could even say goodbye. Don't go outside. I quickly shouted down the phone just to remind him whether he heard me or not. I couldn't tell you. When the line went dead, I could still hear the bells. They gradually got louder. I glanced out the window once more. They were still standing there. Waving me down. <laughs> no fucking chance. It's been just over a week now, and every night they come, every single night the bells ring. Every single night the bells ring at midnight, and without fail, they're outside my house. Sometimes Liam's with them, sometimes not. I haven't spoken to Brian in a while. I'm just hoping, praying, that I don't look out one night, and he's joined them. I should probably phone him and make sure he's okay and remind him not to go outside. Tonight marks the epic conclusion of the Scotland Bell Tower series, Season 2. But don't you worry, Season 3 is on its way. The story is written by Reggae Junkie. The video features the talented voices of As the Raven Dreams and Vith22. Please check all three of them out. Reggae Junkie's a talented author, as is Raven, and Raven and Vidith are very talented narrators. Go check them out and let them know PA sent you. Hey, did you have merch? Well, I do. And if you like to walk around representing my realm and gaining me new travelers, the links to my merch store, as well as all my other social medias, will be in the description below. As always, I'd like to say a special thank you to all my lovely Patreons. 242 reads Rando Calrissian Seraphine the Midnight Bard Creepy Clown Girl Mia Mina Hair Raising Narratives Spooky Boo Scary Story Time Lichen Trucker and Pimp Demon. If you'd like to join these lovely travelers by the light of my fire, you can do so by becoming a Patreon as well. Just remember the support is always appreciated, but it's never expected. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and ding that bell if you're new, as all of that will really help push this video into the algorithm and helps the channel grow.
but as always travelers, once you step into my realm, there's no stepping out.